Hey guys, this week we're talking about the six mistakes you're probably making with the Flex by Jim Aware. So stay tuned and let's check out what they are. Mistake number one, not securing the Flex unit. See how the magnets secure it to the end, but then you also can tighten it. And that's the mistake that a lot of you guys are making. So make sure that you stick it all the way on and then you use a little screw to tighten it on. And so here... Here I am doing, I think, um, 308 pounds and dropping it and notice nothing comes off. Or you can watch here, this is um, 160 kilos, 354 pounds. Notice how nothing's gonna happen once he jerks it above his head. And he's gonna slam it down and nothing happened. Mistake number two, mat placement. Look how the flex should be right over the mat. If you use the arrows that are already on the mat, you should never have a problem. You just gotta always have the flex over the mat. It, the reflection is what gives the laser version of the tether so we can measure distance and time because that's all that velocity really is, is distance divided by time. You see in the picture how it's directly over the mat and when it's in the rack, that first arrow should match up. Anyway, one last thing about the mat, make sure you clear all obstructions that might con come in between the flex unit and the mat because if, if anything gets in there like you see this is me training in my basement as you can see like all the things laying around if like that plate was in between the flex and the mat it would destroy the laser and mess up the tether which the tether is created by the laser so just keep that in mind keep everything out of the way of the flex and the mat arrow should match up anyway mistake number three plastic end caps um these the flex is secured by magnets so obviously if you have a trap bar with a plastic end cap it's not going to work that well so make sure that you get bars that are designed properly with a metal end cap you don't want plastic anyway because plastic is going to break it's going to fall off and these are some of the the um here we're in the train portion, and this thing is so easy to use. I mean, it's got all the exercises you could ever dream of. Pieces of equipment that normally might have some of that plastic. So make sure that you are getting equipment that's properly designed. Here's a picture of a bar with the plastic end cap, so try not to get that. Stake number four, you're unable to co connect. Well, number one, you gotta have your Bluetooth, and you gotta, you know, you really need your Wi-Fi on too. Um, just tap the upper left corner, that little circle flex, and then make sure your flex is on, press connect. And then when you go back and check, you'll notice that you are secured. And so, as you can see now, when you check your Bluetooth, you'll see that, boom, the flex 2041 is connected. So now you're ready to go. Mistake number five, unfamiliar with the app. The favorite section though is my favorite because you get to design your own programs and they will actually show the total tonnage, the number of sets, and the number of reps, which, you know, you can pretty much figure out anything from there. You'll see how much of your program is power, speed, and strength. You look at how many sets and reps you're, you're designating to the different exercises. Here's an example of one I built. Here's a, you know, full clean. Uh, the power section of the workout is the clean. You got the reps, the sets, the, the um, percentages. You've got the velocity you've got the duration of rest same for your strength portions um here's an accessory workout and which i have every set you know your reps your sets your velocity and your duration for all of them and then you can actually send your workout to whoever you want it's in your friends list and we're going to talk more about the community section of the app in a minute but here's me sending the workout I just designed to evan who is the um and CEO of the whole company, and a friend of mine, Jay, he used to be a part of Jim Aware, and um, a coach that coaches with me, Sean Rigsby. So now they, those three guys have the ability to take those three workouts, or I can just star it, and then anyone in my friend section can use it. So uh, now I'm actually going to show you how to design a program. Here we are going to do, we'll name it Max Effort. Um, it's so self-explanatory, so... Then we're going to, once we've done that, now we'll choose the exercises that we're going to use. And so for this first section of the program, we're going to choose a power-based um, exercise. So we're going to look at the clean. So you just scroll down. You can also search for this at the top as well, but 
We're gonna do full clean from the blocks. And then, then we're gonna check the velocity. So I'm gonna click on it. Um, I changed it to peak velocity, of course. Um, 1.5 for five foot seven guys is a pretty good um, peak velocity that corresponds with the percentage I wanna choose. Um, choose the number of reps. We're gonna go with two. We're gonna look at um, the mass, but we're gonna change the mass to percentage of one RM. You can do either. You can just put the, the actual weight you want them to use, but normally I, I prescribe with percentages. I would choose 83%, but we don't have a one RM. So I gotta I need to go in and put in the one RM for this particular exercise. So we will scroll scroll down to the squats. And then we'll choose the the one RM, which mine is 140. And so then we simply go back. And now we have uh, everything, but now we want to put the rest in as well. So we'll check, click on. All you got to do is tap on it. And with two minutes, you know, do two, three, whatever it is you want. And then finally, what you do is you tap in the number of sets, and boom, it just auto populates the whole thing for you. So it's super simple. Now we're going to go in and change the name from working sets, which is the automatic name that's given. And then we're going to change it to power because this is a power type of movement. Now we're going to design a new block. We're going to name it strength. Normally this is what I call a block that's got something besides, you know, the cleans or snatches, more like squatting, benching, deadlifting, you know, the normal ones we use. So here I'm going to check off back squat and then I'm going to build it out, which is all right, so now we're gonna build out the, the back squat just like we did the cleans. So let's check that out. So first off, we're gonna run in the number of reps, which we're here, we're gonna do five reps. Then we're gonna check the intensity, uh, AKA load. So the percent of one RM is gonna be 80%. Then we're gonna check, you know, do we wanna measure mean velocity, peak velocity, height, or whatever. There's a lot of choices. So with strength, I usually um, target mean velocity. So when it comes to 80%, I check a little chart that I designed based on my athletes. And so 0.49 correlates to that. So we're going to do a two minute rest period. And we'll put the number of sets in it's four. And so I'm going to show you guys how to design a circuit type of workout or a superset. Um, so we're just going to name it simply circuit. So then we're going to choose the movements that we want to use. And in this case, we want to use the Romanian deadlift. And we're going to scroll down and we're going to to um, do the lunge, something that all of us tend to use maybe for a finisher. Now we're gonna build it out. So let's start with the um, Romanian deadlift. Number of reps, here we're gonna do six. Then we're going to change the mass to percentage. You know, I usually use percentages, it's totally up to you. You can just use a prescribed load, whatever it is you wanna do. And then we're gonna go to 7% here, sorry, and then we're gonna choose mean velocity, which I actually looked this up. So just to make sure that I'm right, but 0.59 meters per second. If you guys have already done your own averages for your team, then that's good. But um, I said to give bad advice. Then we're gonna go to the lunge. Notice we left out the rest and I'll show you why. So we're gonna go eight reps on the lunge. That's each leg, obviously. Then we're gonna change it to percentages. We're gonna look at doing 65% um, here. And for the mean velocity, we're gonna go 0.77 um, meters per second for mean or average velocity. Then we're gonna go back and at the top, we're going to choose um, three rounds. Simple as easy as clicking on it and putting it in a three, and then it will auto populate. And it'll give you all the sets for both exercises, giving in rounds. Then we're gonna look at, you know, setting the rest between rounds. So here we're gonna do two minutes and we've built a circuit nice and easy. See how easily populated once you enter the base uh, information for the first round. You're gonna have a lot of fun with this prescription thing. So now we're gonna look at testing 1RMs. It's as easy as clicking on the test 1RMs and I'll push start and I'll actually walk you through it. So it's, it's super easy. You just gotta get a few data points and the formula is already embedded into the app. Now, one of my favorite options is the stored history that we have, you know, once you you know, done a workout, as long as you track it and you'll have all the sets, reps, velocities from all of your workouts in the past, which makes it super easy to track your data and keep up. We'll also have the velocity, the power, the distance, which is good for jumping, insight, bar path, 
So as you can see, like it's all, I love this part. This is the, the video part I use a lot, obviously. And um, it's just kind of cool to be able to post your video with your percentages. Now the community section, I feel like is what makes this thing so personal. And this, all right, number six, the Flex is integrated with the Gym Aware system. Um, maybe some of y'all didn't know, but as you can see, there's a ton more parameters that you guys have to choose from to analyze your athlete. When you're dealing with top athletes, it's like a, it's a puzzle, and these metrics help you find what it is that's you know causing issues. As you can see, this is what I was doing before gym wear, and I still do some of this you know on my own. But the gym wear makes it so much easier because it has the data automatically saved in the cloud for me, so I don't have to worry about some athlete writing something down or or keeping track of something. It just automatically happens, and it makes tracking all this information so much easier because it's already there you know I, I don't have to worry about you know if an athlete you know decided to go a little bit lighter or if they were slow that day the velocity the weight the intensity the tonnage the reps it's all stored for me so i don't have to worry about you know keeping up with a thousand spreadsheets and not, not to mention this covid era is super important and here is ryan you know we're doing 210 kilos this was a pr but it's at 0 0.41 meters per second. So it's allowed us to alter his plan a little bit. And guess what? He was ready. You know, he was this 185 kilogram clean jerk PR. So use data and you'll know what's gonna happen versus hoping.